Hi, my name is Doug McRae, and I am a biologist working with Savanta. Uh, and one of the birds I work on uh, quite a bit are a couple of grassland species. One of them is the eastern meadowlark, and the other is the bobolink. Both have been listed as threatened in Ontario just in the last few years. And this is where they live, old fields. Now, bobolink and meadowlark are actually blackbirds. They're members of the blackbird family but they're both strikingly colored, very different from each other. Meadowlarks are a big, chunky bird, about the size of a morning dove, with a brilliant yellow breast and a bold black V on the chest. When you see one fly up out of the field, it looks brown on the back, which helps it blend into the grass, but they have white outer tail feathers. And so if you see a, a chunky brown bird lift off with white outer tail feathers, that's a meadowlark. Bobolinks, oh, and males and females look the same in meadowlarks. Bobolinks, males and females look quite different. Females look like a big sparrow. They're brown, intricately streaked on the crown and on the back. The throat and breast are clear and kind of buffy brown. They're quite lovely looking, but they tend to stay out of sight most of the time. The male bobolinks are one of the very few birds in nature that is essentially light above, dark below. That's a, that's a very rare pattern in nature. So male bobolinks are all black with a, a cream-colored collar and then intricate markings of sort of whitish and silver all over the back. So if you saw it from above, it would probably break up. It might even look a bit like this pale grass blending in. It might be hard to see if you were above. That could be why it's patterned that way. Both male and female bobolinks have a very unusual tail. The tail feathers come out and they're all spiked and pointed. They don't blend in nicely like most bird tails. So they look kind of like that. And, and in fact, bobolink's in its own genus. There's no other bird in that genus. It's quite a unique thing. Now, I mentioned they are grassland nesting birds. And grassland is kind of a broad term that encompasses a lot of different kinds of fields. Um, and bobolink's and meadowlarks, you often find them in the same field, but you can also find just one or the other. And a bit of that depends on, on the stage of succession the field is in. Bobolink's are often in hay fields, for example, which are almost a monoculture. Uh, but any old field that's been let go, an old hay field that hasn't been farmed in years, uh, will be quite popular with bobolinks. They need a few things. They need a fairly strong component of grass, like I have right here where I'm standing. Whereas if you look over here, um, you can see a lot of teasel and goldenrod and other forbs this part of the field probably is not suitable anymore. It's too coarse. Um, and if you also look, uh, can we shoot down here for a sec? If you look down here, there's a lot of old dead grasses. And I keep digging down, and you can't even see the earth. It's just beds of dead grass from year after year. And this is what they like to nest in. They'll build the nest right down here, out of sight, uh, just sort of like this, tucked under a tuft of grass. The nest itself will be lined with old grasses, and it's very hard to see. And, uh, and th this is actually true of both bobolinks and meadowlarks, again. Um, they're a very hard nest to find, and you usually only find it when you almost step on it, and then the female will fly off. And that's when you, when you know you've got a nest. But they usually go up only a foot or two from your foot as you walk by, so uh, finding a nest can be a little difficult. Now, um, Meadowlarks, just to talk a little bit about the difference in the habitat between bobolink and meadowlark. Bobolinks are less tolerant of this woodier vegetation coming up. So as a field, over the course of 20 or 30 years, when a field converts from just straight grass to starting to get shrubs and things, bobolinks really like it in the earlier part of that process. Meadowlarks are more tolerant of scrub, and they can even have isolated shrubs and things. That's not a problem at all. In fact, they'll use them as singing perches, and, and so do bobolinks. Um, another interesting thing about grassland birds is to get noticed in a grassland, imagine the, the prairies out west. There's, there's no trees. It's just grass. How do you get noticed? And, and there's two choices, either color or song. And both of these birds are quite striking both in their appearance and in their songs. Uh, meadowlarks have kind of a whiny, sibilant little thing, which is, curiously enough, often imitated by starlings. Um, and it's sort of like a wee-ah, wee-ah, like that. Kind of a whiny sort of thing. Bobolinks, uh, a friend of mine once described it as a music box gone mad. 
and it's just this bizarre jumble of notes, sort of like a bing bing dee dee da 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 do 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 do, you know, and they and they just go on and on and on. It's really really fun to watch. And bobolinks do it as an aerial display. That's the other way grassland birds get noticed, is they'll fly up and do their song in the air where other birds can see them. And then they'll come down in the grass and they're hidden again. Um, now, these birds are mainly in the summertime, in the nesting season, they're feeding their young insects. So they're walking around in this grass, picking stuff off and taking it to the young. Outside of the breeding season, they'll convert and can eat plant seeds quite readily as well. But they generally feed the young insects uh, because it's just a, a bigger bang for the buck. Uh, and, and these young, you've got to bear in mind, these young are, are going from hatching to flying in just over two weeks. So there's a lot of food required to generate that kind of a growth rate. You might be asking yourself, why are there no meadowlarks and bobolinks here right now? That's because we're filming in September, and bobolinks have largely left the area, and most meadowlarks have left, although there could still be a few around. But when they're not actively breeding, they don't sing, and they do not make themselves conspicuous. When they're breeding, they're sitting up on, on high stalks of vegetation so they can be seen, so they can project their territorial song. Now they're not interested in being seen, they're interested in being unseen. So their meadowlarks might still be here, they could be walking around in the grass, and the only way you'll ever find them at this time of year is if you just walk transects through and you might flush them up. Now uh, bobolinks uh, come back to Ontario in early May. Males first, females about a week or so later. And they're quite obvious up until about mid to late July. Uh, at that even in mid-July, and, and the last individuals are leaving the province now, in mid-September. Meadowlarks come back a bit earlier. They come back in late March, and uh, are very conspicuous in April and May. That's when they're setting up the territories, that's when pairs are being formed, when males are chasing other males out of the area. So that's an excellent time to go out and try and see these birds. And they often sit up on power lines, fence posts, uh, and, and they're, they're quite noticeable because of that brilliant yellow breast. And the meadowlarks will stay around. It's kind of hard because they go inconspicuous after breeding. It's a little hard to know when the bulk of the population leave. But I would guess that most of them leave during September with birds lingering on into October, maybe even early November. And in exceptional, uh, well not exceptional years, but down here uh, in the Niagara region where we are today, small numbers actually even overwinter in grassy fields. Just a few. Uh, if you're further north, Near the Canadian Shield, that's a major rarity in the winter. It does occasionally happen, but uh, not very often. Bobolinks, on the other hand, oh, and, and meadowlarks are not going that far. They're a bit of a short distance migrant. They're going into the central and southern U.S. to spend the winter. Bobolinks, on the other hand, are going right to South America. They're going into northern South America, the grasslands of Argentina. Uh, and uh, one of the nicknames for them is rice bird, because they often uh, feed in big rice fields. And, uh, and that's a, considered an agricultural pest, and some countries in South America actually actively kill lots of bobolinks to get them out of the rice fields, which is another aspect of the conservation issue. Um, but so far, the population, although they have declined a lot, they're still in reasonably good numbers. They're not imminently threatened or anything like that. Um, but the trend is the concern, and it's this consistent decline year after year after year. And that's the thing that we need to kind of focus on and hopefully arrest the decline.